Dr. Michaels, it's an honor to be sitting here with you today. A very, very interesting chain of events has caused this interview to come to fruition in the first place, all surrounding a technology that you've developed that many call MedBed technology because that's really what it emulates in its essence of how it works and what I would call the miracles that it's allowed to come to fruition on many people all around the world. It's a technology that I've seen firsthand dissolve a 12 and a half inch cystic fibroid in my aunt's uterus. A technology that has caused TLS to actually encourage me to come and help raise awareness to this incredible healing modality that you've created, but also to help figure out a way to make it more accessible around the world. And what's interesting is that you're actually the first person that I know of that TLS has accepted and agreed to associate with publicly without hiding your identity, which is a very big deal. And I'm <laughs> sure that it's all for good reason, especially with the what I call technology. I know you have a different way of um, speaking about it, but it is an incredible technology that I know I am sitting here for a very good reason to help bring out to the world so we can help make more accessible. So with that being said, before we go deeper into what this technology is all about, what we're actually sitting next to as we speak in this interview, can you share a little bit more about your background to create a foundation for those who don't know who you are and the work that you do? Okay. Yeah, people ask where did it start? Well, <laughs> uh, my parents met in engineering physics, my mother a nuclear physicist, my dad the aerospace electrical mechanical structural engineer, met in engineering physics and uh, oops, <laughs> um, I was conceived at Tesla's power plant site you know, at Niagara Falls and on their honeymoon. Mm -hmm which my mother was not happy about, <laughs> but, uh, but she was fissioning plutonium in the labs, the Battelle labs, um, working on the bomb the whole time she was pregnant with me. When you say the bomb, are you referring to the nuclear bomb? Yeah, working on bomb technologies. And so coming in, I see everything as that combination of engineering and physics. You know, so I see the body that way as a circuitry. And, uh, but I thought everybody grew up uh, you know, I fit with my favorite toys, which were Geiger counters and gyroscopes, <laughs> and healing all the animals on the farm. So I was very blessed uh, in that my parents were both hyper, hyper genius. Mensa, I grew up with all the gifts of the Mensa, um, you know, support for development. And, uh, and, and coming in going, you know, my mother was working on the bomb. My dad did stealth bombers and worked on Mach 3. And I'm going, how do we heal? How do we bring healing to the world? How do we heal all of this? And so that was what my quest has been. And I started in chiropractic, reflexology, nutrition, Ayurveda, um, acupressure, 1971. And so there's that whole background of really focusing on how do we bring healing. But I also studied uh, Rife technology and radionics in the early 70s. Mm. And by 1978, I built my first scalar healing light chamber after doing a whole bunch of experiments and research and oh, incorporating uh, materials from NASA and doing a lot of research on photons and biophotonic importance of biophotonic energy and the importance of standing columnar waves in the scalar. So we were seeing absolute total miracles in 1978, but it was one person at a time. Can't heal the world that way. So, but we saw reversals of all kinds of, all kinds of things um, because the power that made the body heals the body. So it's not like my technology is doing the healing. No, the power that made the body heals the body. When the body has the right information, the right energy, it wants to heal everything. The body wants to function perfectly. And so it's just a hyper healthy energetic environment that we've created, kind of like, <laughs> like you recharge your cell phone, but you're recharging every cell of your body in, with a wireless transmission of energy and dense intentional informational fields combined with the photonics and, and because the DNA is biophotonic. 
but this was a whole download of instruction to create this after being recognized as one of the top healers on the planet because I'm really a hands-on healer. Is it safe to say from what I'm understanding with what you're expressing here about this technology which we'll dive into in just a second it's not the technology that's healing you it's the technology that's creating an environment for you to heal yourself. That's correct. Understood. So energy enhancement system is what we're looking at over here. I know this is called the cube and you have many other ways that you can formulate this in a room with multiple different screens and systems, 16 unit systems, 24 unit systems. For short, I know you call it EES technology, the energy and EE system. EE system. Understood. So can you explain a little bit more before you explain how this thing works? How did it come to you? I mean, this is, this is no joke. You know, when you're seeing people getting healed in, in an hour, you know, in a few minutes, in a few hours from things that they say are impossible, you need surgery or you're going to die. And we're seeing people step into this room and being changed almost instantaneously. How did something like that come to you? Was it given to you from somebody? Did it come to you through spiritual essence, spiritual ways? How, how did you bring this to fruition? <laughs> Yeah, it's a really, really good question because my mastery is with the body and tracking things cell by cell through the body and the body has consciousness mm -hmm. and the DNA, specifically working with the DNA and the codes of the DNA and the memory and the cell memory, but the DNA uh, and the DNA is biophotonic. We are bodies of light. In fact, my original work was under body of light and that's a federal trademark copyright, etc. from Way back to, I think that was finalized in 97 or something like that, mm -hmm. body of light, because we are bodies of light. Prime function of DNA is storage of photons. You know, and so I have all the, the scientific and medical background, but bringing it forward, um, I, and I was meditating during a Scorpio eclipse in the early 90s, 92. <laughs> actually and I was meditating and going the, you know the clearer your question the clearer your answer ask and you shall receive is a law and so I was asking okay now how do we how do we bring healing to the world there's only so many people I could personally teach or touch or train how do we bring healing to the world and even more specifically how do we create the quantum leaps of consciousness for accelerated evolution, yes, for a new heaven, a new earth, through us, um, you know. So, and it was a download of instruction to program technology to emulate my work, as I was already recognized as top healer. People flew me everywhere, flew in from everywhere. I'd be booked 40 hours straight with sessions, uh, waiting lists of people because anything and everything would heal because the body wants to function perfectly. You know, so I used to say I'm like jumper cables. So that's what we created, kind of jumper cables <laughs> to the body. Mm -hmm. But we're like jumper cables for, you know, that spark of life, that optimal, you know, light force, literally light force, life force energy to flow through us and to touch the hearts of, of every cell, to touch the, you know, because when you activate that light within you, it reminds you who you are, all that you are, all that you're here for, all that you have access to. And so it's spiritual science. And yes, I can go right down all the rabbit holes of all the actual physics and biophysics and quantum physics and nuclear physics. And, you know, so I have all that background and the medical side, <laughs> and I'm recognized as a doctor of natural medicine besides a biophysicist. You know, and like I said, Mensa, we, our brains are a little bit different. You know, so I can go right down into all the science, but it's really spiritual. And so I was asked to create this technology uh, to create that quantum leap of consciousness to bypass some of the projected realities. How do we create consciousness where you can call forth all the wisdom of what's been held in the DNA. How do you call forth all the wisdom of our, of our ancestors? How do we be here now in the fulfillment of all the prayers, all the promises, all the prophecies of all who have gone before us? Mm -hmm. 
and call forth all that wisdom rather than being stuck in any old patterns or programs of old genetic damage even that's been held in the DNA or in the cell memory. How do we call forth the wisdom of, of all that and be present now you know, as the fully realized Christed conscious beings to walk the planet in total balance and total awareness of who we are, all that we are, all that we have access to, and how highly we're connected. You know, so there's a lot of science to that, but it's really, it's an embodiment of truth because yes. it's truth that sets us free. And that's part of how this was developed, is the cells vibrate and resonate with the power of truth. So, first of all, I love the fact that you bring it all back to the spiritual core of everything, because that's really what everything kind of emerges out of. I think one of the main problems with medicine today, and even science today, and the way that we're applying it is, we're only focused on the physical. And people forget that spirit world and the intangible roots that everything emerges, emerges from. So I appreciate the fact that you bring that and I think that that's why this technology came to fruition because you connected to, I mean, call it the, the wisdom of the, of the ancestors, to source, to light, yeah. you know, everybody has a different name for it, to God. But I do believe that that's why we're sitting here based on the expression of your ex explanation. It's coming from a deeper root and not just the surface of physicality. So I want to ask you a question. I'm looking at this thing over here. I see a lot of lights. I see it moving very fast. Some move faster than the rest. Some lights are different colors. How does this thing work? <laughs> well, you could see this as polychromatic, a polychromatic therapy, like your ultimate light therapy. There is that aspect to it. Um, you know, and the DNA is biophotonic of course, as we talk about. But how do you create those quantums of light, the biophotons? Well, that comes through the intersection of fields, phase conjugation, phase conjugate wave pairs, where you, you have the collision uh, of fields, which uh, creates an implosion and a release of charge. So it creates a torsion field, or t a tube torus torsion field, your scalar vortex. And that combination then with the light <laughs> is how we're interfacing with the body because the, the DNA, the, the whole, everything is in that, that torsion field or that scalar vortex, which has been called the secret of life, right? right. You know, but also with the light and dense intentional informational fields. So it's a combination of, of you know, it's a whole layering of things and you're seeing it in its Fibonacci sequences, your golden mean, but that it's, you know, creates the Fibonacci sequences has to do, I was told specifically to incorporate that because everything in the body is based on that Fibonacci sequence or the golden mean, which, um, but the specific for that is to activate and mobilize the body cell, uh, you know, the body stem cells, which are you know, because it's activating the, and mobilizing the, the body's own cellular replication patterns. You know, so, and it's designed to interface with the DNA. If you look at it, you know, if you, if you can kind of see it, we're, we're kind of close to it, but it's like 12 strands of DNA. It's designed to be specifically emulating 12 strands of DNA to activate all the latent capabilities of our DNA. That, that's not junk DNA. So can you, say, can you say that this can actually work to activate certain strands or aspects of your DNA? Yes. And if, you, if I put it to a black background, it looks precisely, specifically, like out of the Genome Project. Mm. Even though I developed this to interface with the DNA way before I ever saw any of those screens from the Genome Project. Very interesting. What kinds of things have you seen done with this technology healing wise oh gosh we're very blessed we've literally seen ev anything and everything heal um, the body wants to heal um, you know we've had people literally sent for hospice I think I I think I showed you a picture of uh, of a general 
Did I show you that? I don't think so. Maybe we can maybe show that. Uh, oh, it, yes, with the burns? Yes, the third degree burns over his whole body. Three strokes, 77 years old. He was sent to hospice by the VA. And I said, just get him here, get him to me. He, was, he had total paralysis both sides. No bladder control, no bowel control. Everybody thought he was dead. I mean, he looked dead. <laughs> but. <laughs> But they brought him in, I carried him in. They brought him for four hours a day. And I showed you the picture after 10 days where he's standing. And... It looked much better. <laughs> yeah. And brought him back to life. And he was able to fulfill and go back and, and complete and accomplish some of the things that he really wanted to accomplish. Before mm -hmm. I, and that, that was 77. I think he passed when he was 82. But amazing, amazing man, amazing story, and uh, yeah, I told you some of that, and, and just uh, fascinating stuff. And uh, another example of stroke, for example, Dr. Dream, Mark Peebler, he put out, he had a double stroke. He was, I, I sent him a message, just get here, get to an EE system ASAP after a double stroke. Well, he got here, he ended up coming here uh, about three weeks after his stroke. It took about 45 minutes for him to come in that door and make it to the system. He could not, and this was with the walker and two people helping him, he could not stand at all without falling down. After two hours though, he walked unassisted <laughs> from over a hundred feet unassisted both ways without touching anything intentionally. And he's doing fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, so we've seen just crazy miracles. I mean, we love miracles. But it's just, you know, the power that made the body heals the body, really. And this is like, how do you plug the body back into that cosmic light socket? Universal, unlimited power on. And that's your light force energy. Hmm. I know you can go on with stories endlessly of oh. the, the things that you've seen, even from the conversations that you and I have had off camera. But I want to ask you a difficult question that I'm sure a lot of people are asking. If this works the way that we're saying that it works, and it creates the miracles that we're seeing in many people all around the world, how hasn't it been destroyed? <sighs> Coincidentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm very highly protected, <laughs> but there have been many, many attempts on my life. I mean, let's be real. Uh, but I'm also very highly protected because of the high level of beings that have our technology. Um, Can you, know, you speak more about that? Special forces, for example, <laughs> but, you know, admirals and generals and that, you know, I mean, it's, so it's been very highly protected. In, in those ways as well. And also, it was initially, initially I only let it out to private homes. That's why now about 90% of the systems are actually in private homes. And actually, one of the initial systems that I went out, that went out, went out to a student of mine who was studying with me, studying healing. You know, I'm recognized as a kahuna in Hawaii. And he was studying healing with me, and, and it went out to him. and. Um, he introduced himself at our at our first uh, training in Hawaii that I did with him as a <laughs> as a Wall Street tycoon, <laughs> but he was part of the Rothschild family, <laughs> so he actually one of the first systems went to him. So what what you're saying is there are elites in the world that are using this technology. Yes, and you know they want to heal from all their own abuse and trauma and as well. Uh, the first full system was, was finally installed in Golden, Colorado in um, 1996. And so there is a history from there of, you know, that we can talk about <laughs> as far as who showed up when the, because it creates, uh, we're colliding photons like Cerner Fermi Labs creating photonic fusion. So it's a cold fusion type event. Okay. I know you had an experience, something having to do with NASA, DEF COM. Can you, can you <laughs> share that? Uh, yeah, I guess we can. <laughs> Whatever you're comfortable with. 
And um, yeah, very, very interesting because, you know, next thing you know, there were, there were ships overhead when, we, when I finally got a full system set up. And, uh, and, you know, <laughs> black helicopters, because this was near NORAD, um, things like that. And then actually somebody from NASA was sent to find out what we were doing because it showed up like the signature of a nuclear sub on land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it, it ended up, um, so I was told that, you know, <laughs> well I was told this fairly recently by the person that sent NASA to us, uh, that there were actually 300 men in hazmat suits that surrounded us. <laughs> I said, I didn't see that many, really. <laughs> I didn't see all those. <laughs> I saw some. <laughs> um, but, um, but anyway, we ended up putting a system uh, down in Houston. Okay. And I would get briefings from NASA as they were studying the effects of the technology. And part of the research that was done was studying the effects on the DNA. And again, I designed this specifically to interface with the DNA. So studying the effects on the DNA was a top geneticist out of Baylor University. And they found that it was repairing all the breaks in the DNA, all the wow. genetic damage, but all the all the all the DNA because it's designed specifically to put the DNA back to its original divine matrix. I like to say we have designer genes and how do you put the DNA back to its original design. So it's designed to intentionally put the DNA back to its original design. They found it was repairing all the damage, all the breaks in the DNA and lengthening the telomeres. So that's true age reversal. Nobody knew what telomeres were. They, nobody was talking about that back in the late 90s, but uh, that's true age reversal. And, uh, I understand the longer they are, the longer you live. That's correct. So there's a direct correlation. Lots more research on that. And shortened telomeres creates shortened life. You see shortened telomeres, for example, with cancer. But this is going to try to lengthen the telomeres, which are like the end caps of the DNA, or you know, it's the end caps, you know, like a shoestring, or I, I, I talk about, you know, this is a scalar wave here. It's really good for hair, and lengthening it grows super fast. I need that. <laughs> the hair grows in thick and fast and, and things like that, but the ends don't split because it's a unified, cohesive, coherent, unified field effect. Hmm. But, but also it's because of the collision of the photons uh, creates, you know, a, cold, a fusion type event which creates hydrobifurcation, which is a release of the active oxygen. So you've got like your ultimate oxygen therapy. So you see the cells, the red blood cells, perfectly, totally oxygenated, and which is really important. <laughs> You know, especially in what we've been dealing with lately, how the cells stay totally oxygenated and yep. free flowing. But so you got the active oxygen. Now, some of the physicists I've worked with found that's five or six molecules of active oxygen and active hydrogen. Now, the active hydrogen, that's your pH, it's your hydrogen potential or the power of hydrogen. But it's the active hydrogen then that can repair the covalent hydrogen bonds in the DNA. You know, you've got, it's putting the DNA back to its original unified. Because what radiation does, now understand, I know radiation literally from the inside out with my mother, right? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I came in extreme radiation poisoning myself. And that's what we're all dealing with now is radiation poisoning. Radiation unzips the DNA, breaks those bonds. Okay, when so it comes to radiation, put it back and repair those bonds. What about this? How does this not emit any negative radiative effects? And it's been tested and tested and tested every which way. And it, and it's that, because that's a great question. Because of the phase conjugation, it creates a zero point technology, and it creates a nullification of all detrimental and destructive fields, and that null zone effect. Where and um, one of the 
you know, president of the Biophysics Association, but he was a top researcher for the Pentagon, was brought to meet me, sent to meet me, and brought a $100,000 oscilloscope. And you can actually watch that video on YouTube. When was this? Oh gosh, that's a number of years ago. Um, you know, John Orava. And he brought that hundred very specialized oscilloscope, and, but he's explaining what he's seeing and what it means. And it's showing that total nullification of the detrimental field effects, mm. but also that it's a total transmutation of all detrimental and destructive fields into beneficial you know, a beneficial energy. And it's not just a sp this or that frequency, it's, it's spanning a full spectrum because that's how the body works. And, and with, with a predominance in the, you know, because we did a lot of brain research, he was considered the top brain researcher in the world. And then there's a predominance in the ideal optimal brain states, you know, which has to do with the Schumann resonance. There's a predominance in the Schumann resonance and, and the 14 or so CPS, which is your cycles per second, you know, your, um, which is the, um, like the energy found in a virgin rainforest for example, and that kind of thing. And then some of the research we did was very, very interesting because I have more than 30-some years of research in right-left brain synchronization. Hmm. You know, so that's very, very important to healing because as long as there's brain dominance, there's constant imbalance, there's struggle. That's fright, flight, or fight. Constant compensation for imbalance. Right brain dominance or left brain dominance you know, we'd like to clear some of those domination issues and those power struggles on this planet. We just want to be in love, male and female in balance and unified. Unified, it's a good term. <laughs> <laughs> we want to come together, right? And that release of charge is that oneness with that, <laughs> that organic love of creator and creation coming together within us. So that balance of right and left brain hemispheres creates your ideal um, whole brain thinking, your genius states, but activating, uh, opening up all the neurotransmitters. You know, it's like being on drugs with no drugs because it's oxygenating the brain. It's a natural high. Yep. Antidepressant effects, things like that. Because people come out feeling very happy and that's, that was a significant piece in our initial clinicals that were done in 2001. Mm. It was uh, Dr. Victor Marcial Vega did the initial clinicals 132 patient studies so people can read that on the research page but in, out of a he's an oncologist so how many people come out of a cancer clinic feeling happy that had never happened <laughs> but it creates those ideal optimal brain states so some of that research was that you could go to a deeper meditational state than a Tibetan monk mm. in seven minutes Wow yeah, accelerated evolution. <laughs> you have to teach people how to meditate. So I tell everybody to say all their prayers and focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Visualize, you know, that's visualization, but the power of prayer. And thank the body for functioning so perfectly because you're literally breathing light to every cell and every part of yourself. That's unbelievable. Thank every cell, no one remember the power of the truth, of the love, of our being here. So that's what that, that consciousness is about. So it's very, very interesting. So, but he explains it on the scientific side, and then we've worked with so many doctors and scientists. And, and uh, like I said, the initial clinicals, 2001. And uh, it goes on from there. It's beautiful. <laughs> so I understand, which is obvious at the, this point, the level of protection that you have on your life, on everything that you're building, on what you're doing. How do we ensure that this remains protected when you're no longer here? <laughs> well, it can't stop. It's like a snowball. The Great Awakening cannot, will not be stopped. I have been promised that. <laughs> I was also promised a few things coming in. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm here to teach kind of physical immortality. <laughs> you, you could call this immortality medicine. Yeah. Infinity, everybody wants to know, how long does a charge last? You know, this is non-linear, non-Hertzian, fifth dimensional, standing column or waves beyond relative time and space. They're trans-dimensional. 
interdimensional. Yep. And it's that zero point energy. But how long does infinity last? It's like an infinitely projected Mobius. That's a way to understand a scalar vortex. Okay. And then we talked about that null zone. It goes out 2.2 miles every direction. This is industrial strength scalar. This goes 2.2 miles out in terms of its effect. That's the measured null zone, yes. So you could pretty much protect an entire neighborhood. Yeah, so it's about how, how do we create healthy communities? Because we have to come together Wow. And create communion. <laughs> you know, but we have to come together and be the greater community. So the benefit for the community is a nullification of the detrimental field effects. The hyper healthy energy, the DNA is biophotonic, so it's in the room. The scalar goes through the walls, the photons don't. And your photons are your quantums of light. DNA, prime function of DNA. And this is Fritz Albert Popp's work, another biophysicist, but prime function of DNA, according to him, is the storage of photons. Yeah. And DNA is biophotonic. Mm. And so what we're literally doing, the core of the DNA, is the light from the stars. So you see that infinity wave, when it's applied to the body, allows a spiraling into the double helix of the DNA to kind of wipe all the slates clean with the light and activate the light at the core of the DNA, which is the light from the stars. Wow. We are stardust. You know what this is? This is, this is physical, spiritual technology. Yes. It bridged the two worlds. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and keeping the love, keeping the light, letting go of everything. That's that cellular memory erase in a sense. Letting go of anything and everything that no longer serves your greatest life your greatest light, your highest purpose, your highest potential. <laughs> wow. Let's live it. How do you live it? And we need people to stay strong no matter what we're exposed to now. So that's why we also created, can't you make it smaller? Well, we made it smaller. We have our EE medallions, EE bracelets, which helps maintain the integrity of the DNA and the red blood cells, which are that, that same donut shape, right? What, what is the difference between this and that, really? Because on one side, which we'll, we'll get into, this is a whole different, I mean, monster that we're tackling over here. And this is the baby. Be yeah, and this is the baby, right? So what is the difference in terms of effects? Because the question was, do you have any smaller versions of that? And as a matter of fact, I'm wearing These are pretty portable. They're very yeah. handy. So what would be the difference between the two for those who don't have access to, let's say, a center that has this in their state or country. Yeah. Well, these, you know, I mean, these literally have lots of reported miracles where they've put it on somebody in the hospital in a coma and they've watched them come back to life and things like that. Because again, it reminds the body, you know, of that infinite light, life source energy. Um, so, you know, we see miracles with them. The medallions are stronger than the bracelets. Okay. They do like a five-foot cocoon. So people sleep with them. They put them wherever they pass them around. Instead of aspirin for pain, they put them wherever there's inflammation for vision improvement, which is one of the things we hear the most is vision improvement. Wow. At every level. <laughs> you know, because it's decalcifying the pineal gland, etc., and that ultimate you know, meditational states, so people see things, they hear things, they, they, they get their, their, you know, the clearer the questions, the clearer the answers. Absolutely. And that, and so it, I talk about letting yourself know whatever God wants you to know. Let yourself know whatever there is to know, the knowing of which allows all things to be totally clear as issues in your body, your life, your relationships, your family, your community, our whole world now. So that's part of, you know, that going into that, when you know, you know. It's going beyond belief or theoretical, intellectual. This is about embodiment. When you know, you know. And so let yourself know what God wants you to know. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> so people use these for meditation. This says the five foot cocoon. Um, of course, our Stanford, Harvard biophysicist, Dr. Glenn Ryan, mm -hmm. did lab research with the medallions and found a 28% increase in the electrical conductivity 
That's your cell signaling, it's all the coherence. Coherence is very, very, very important principle. Coherence, no impedance. Wow. So coherence in the body, so that you stay strong no matter what you're exposed to. But it's you have 28% increase in the electrical conductivity of, D, of human DNA itself, just from the medallion. The bracelets work a little different because they're on a pulse point and the blood runs through it. Okay. Tell me more. But you know, we're, what we're dealing with is extreme radiation poisoning on the planet. I mean, I, I mean, people could look. I've done talks on that. We've been fuked. Now what? <laughs> From Fukushima. Big time. That was considered. You know, I was working with NASA physicists at the time to bring the solutions of advanced radiation poisoning or advanced radiation remediation. We want to, you know, that's one of my projects is, you know, for the planet, advanced radiation remediation, cleanup of the oceans of, of Fukushima site itself, the land, etc. And I can say unequivocally, we have everything to heal and fix and cure. Everything. Absolutely. But that was an extinction level event in itself because of the radiation levels. Now we've seen an acceleration of that with the 5G, etc. And another celebrity doctor, uh, guru doctor, did testing with all these different things that's supposed to work against 5G, and all these things that are supposed to protect from it. Well, protection from radiation, protection from 5G doesn't work. Protection from, as a principle, doesn't work. Because the more you protect from, the more there is to protect from. Whatever you focus on expands, and all that creates is more, more fancy victim, <laughs> because the more there is to protect from. <laughs> it's a very strong statement and a very true statement that you said, and I want to expand on that for a second for everybody that's watching. Of what you focus on is what you're making stronger, and and just restating what you said in a different way because it's very true. If you're protecting from something. In a way, you're even resisting that something because you're strengthening it by saying, "I have to protect more and more and more from this thing." You're giving it more power, yes. therefore it has more giving power. Giving it power over. over. Exactly. And I just wanted to, to highlight that because it's it's really an important principle, and that's why I say focus on what you want, not what you don't want. Yeah. Very, very, very important. We have to create what we want, <laughs> you know, for our life and our world. We have to be the ones we've been waiting for. <laughs> and so this is to help embody those principles so that you stay strong no matter what you're exposed to. But he tested all these things that were including shungite, which is a great stone, but none of the only thing that actually worked on the 5G was this. And you can see this like a satellite receiver for the technology uh, and that kind of thing. but. But, um, but it's because it creates a transmutation of energy into beneficial, mm -hmm. like electrical precursors for the body, it's kind of like that. So it's a transmutational effect, which is very, very different. Let's make it beneficial. Understood. You mentioned that 90% of where this technology is, is in private homes. The key over here is obviously making it as accessible as possible to more people in the public because it's not necessarily affordable for the common man around the world and we want to figure out a way to make this more accessible. To it them. needs to be everywhere fast. That's the question is do you have any direction or solutions, direct solutions of how we can change that ratio from being instead of 90% of all of this incredible technology that's out there in private homes get it 90% accessible to the public. How do we do something like and that? And there Can are you give beautiful guidance? centers all over, but there needs to be a lot more for the people because we've got so much to heal at this yeah. point. So much to turn around and so much to heal. Of course, I do a lot with the military. There are 1,100 wellness centers planned for veterans and their families. With this technology? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, do, I've done a lot with veterans in the military. And you mentioned these centers. I know you have centers, not necessarily yours, but certain individuals are purchasing the, this technology and then using it to heal others on like hourly sessions or sessions for a period of time. My family has done that right. in multiple centers in New York and New Jersey, and we've seen incredible, incredible 
impacts, beneficial impacts and effects. Is this something that anybody can do? Can anybody go choose to open up a center, get this technology and start providing it to the world? Yes, it's, it's really interesting because like I said, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. We can fill the rooms with 100 people at once. Sometimes we do that. Uh, it's many people at once. You, can't, you know, you can't heal the world. You know, time and energy intensive, practitioner dependent, doctor dependent. Uh, this is like, how do we just bring healing energy for communities? And we don't make any claims. We don't. We don't. Or the technology technology itself doesn't heal, fix, or cure anything. The power that made the body heals the body. And this is like a wireless human battery charger, mm -hmm. erasing the cell membrane potential, raising that cellular millivoltage. It's quadrupled mitochondrial activity in one hour, which explains all the rapid, uh, all, all the rapid nerve cell regeneration, for example. Quadrupled mitochondrial activity, that's your power plants of the cells. And that's what's, you know, we documented that when I lectured at the Royal Society of Mes Medicine in London and did a study, pilot study with nine people. Mm. Yeah, and we found that it was also bringing the pH into the proper pH of all, it, all the organs. There's a lot of research that we've done, but quadrupled mitochondrial activity is very highly significant. So it's pretty much bringing everything back into harmony with itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cancer, for example, we're meant to be functioning at 70 to 90 millivoltage when healthy, right? Okay. Cancer can't exist in the body till it's below 20. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so I can show you some of the AccuGraph um, research and things that show where it's been brought up to, you know, from 21 to 80 is one of our examples in one hour. Wow. Yeah, the millivoltage of the cells. So it's literally how do you plug the body into the cosmic light socket. And, and this is just healthy energy. That's it. It's just creating a healthy energetic environment that supports the body and consciousness in healing, which means wholeness. And wholeness is also about remembering the holiness, the sacredness. And so letting go of the desecration that we've all been through the total desecration and violation from every direction of the sacredness of our bodies and who we are, all that we are, and all that we're here for. For those individuals around the world who would like to step up in, in that invitation that you put out, both men and women who want to step up and be a part of creating that change with at least helping bring this out there, how can they go about for those who choose to create these centers. And by the way, what I love about that action that can be taken is it's twofold. It's giving somebody the ability to give back while also creating a business, mm -hmm. a business that gives back to people simultaneously. And that's, that's how I see the toroidal field. Uh -huh. It's not you have to lose so I can gain. Right. It's we can all work together to gain together in harmony with one another where what you call the masculine, the feminine, become in love once again and create that oneness and that unified field. So for those individuals who want to step up and take action to say, I want to bring this out there. I want to learn more about this. I want to open up a center in my town or village or city or state or whatever it is. How can that individual go about doing something like that? Yeah, and it's pretty easy as far as, you know, the, the technology, you know, there's many ways to install I mean, we have centers that just have cubes, but that's, you know, ideally, like your father and, and your aunt, uh, they went to a 24-unit system. That's, that's another whole world because the 24 is more the geometry of the DNA. Mm -hmm. And then there's just recliners and things. And so it runs 24-7 because it's the energy going through the planet, like Tesla's work, right? <laughs> it's like Tesla's. And it's each system that goes in expands the fields exponentially so that all supports <laughs> it's a really unique so it runs 24 7 and all you have to do is put people in or let people come in and take a power nap because how it really works to recharge it's kind of like when you're recharging your cell phone as long as the eyes are open 80 percent of the body's energy is being externalized to deal with the you know, environment. 
you know. When you close your eyes and go to, all healing is in delta and theta brain states. That's where the repair, rejuvenation, regeneration is. Literally, regeneration. You want to close the eyes, go to those deep states, that, do your meditation, <laughs> focus on what you want, and go to the deep states where the body can internalize all that energy and use it to literally regenerate, regenerate from inside out. So it's a power nap. Literally. Yeah, just like your cell phone, if you're still talking on it, it, doesn't, it might keep it from dying. I mean, it's not like it's not working, and we have miracles with their eyes open too, every day. But, you know, your cell phone doesn't recharge as efficiently if you're still talking on it. Correct. If you, you know, or it's like rebooting a computer, defrag coherence, creating coherence through the, through the systems of the body. So would you say that a 24 unit system when it comes to a center is probably the best That's one the that best. you can get? Although our clinicals have been with fours and eights, eights primarily because eight, eight units is 10 times better than a four. <laughs> and it's always even numbers. Yeah, because it's phase conjugation. Um, they're precisely aligned. Uh, with lasers, you were asking about about this before, how they're aligned, because the alignment, the precision of the alignment, we're trying to get that to within a hundredth of an inch tolerance. Wow. Yeah, and that's because if, and think about it, if one's out, it creates a, a wobble mm. in the, you know, a distortion or a wobble in the field. And if it's out too much, it's like a tilt-a-whirl. <laughs> and that's what, what's unique about these, is four units internally, that are precisely aligned. And then this creates like a photon fountain going out. You know, so It's interesting because as I look at you, I see there's like a, I see in, the, in my peripheral vision where what I see right now on the side is not what I see when I look straight at it. I see different lights on the screen when I look at you in my peripheral than I do when I look this way. I actually see patterns on the screen right now as I'm looking at you in my peripheral. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's like what's embedded within that you can't necessarily see right off the bat, but it's, it's coming at you through that form of light. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like a photon fountain. The downside of these, I mean, we created these and they've been, they don't have to be installed. That's the upside. They don't have to be installed. We ship them all over the world, especially during the last couple of years with dealing with all the issues that people are dealing with. They've been shipping all over the world. It's the, you know, the mini version. It took a lot of dealing with the prototype to create, you know, so this could go out. But you can't get your body in the middle of it so easily. <laughs> it works, but it's kind of the slow boat. And we have miracles with it. You want a couple of those? Please. Yeah. I mean, so one of the prototypes that went out, and one of the initial ones where, you know, um, it has some commercial applications, and this actually went out to commercial application, part of that 28% reduction in surface tension of water. That's some of the research. So reduction of surface tension mm -hmm. has some commercial applications. <laughs> Another topic, but, but that's also a lot of how it works in the body. If uh, the water, you, you know, water is 28% increase, decrease in the surface tension, makes the water more hydrating. The body's mostly water. So that uh -huh. creates all the fluidity, but also a lot of aging is simply dehydration acute chronic dehydration. So, okay, so in this commercial application with a cube in the back of a shop, you know, the, the bottles of water are all bubbled up, you know, right. the five gallon bottles, and the, because it's really releasing the act of oxygen and hydrogen, and you know, it's having those effects on the water. Um, but, okay, so it's in the back of the shop. The guy two doors down has, is a veteran, you know, like I said, we've done a lot with veterans, and he needed bilateral knee replacements. You know, bone on bone, the cartilage was gone, and was in excruciating pain, and he had a gym two doors down from the cube. Well, he'd come visit and what have you, but he realized all the pain in his knees were gone, mm -hmm. so he canceled his surgery. Now, he now squats 475 pounds on those bad knees, right? <laughs> Not anymore. 
<laughs> no, no bad news when anymore. When I talk about regeneration, we've seen anything and everything. Body wants to heal. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's one example. The woman across the way with the Chinese restaurant, 83 years old, who had uh, macular, macular degeneration and cataracts, inoperable cataracts. So she was blind, so she was selling her restaurant, but she started coming in. And she goes, I can see what's going on. I can see. <laughs> so she went back to her ophthalmologist and found that the cataracts were completely gone. Mm -hmm and 83 years old so I guess and then that encouraged us to try to make sure that we develop the prototype further <laughs> but that's the kind of miracles that it but it was slower you know uh, you know as far as in the time that it took than, than in the bigger system I want to see this in as many places as possible it's pretty right I mean it's very pretty it's nice it looks cool you know, it, it even looks good. It's not like it's this, you know, it's this like thing in the room that you don't want there. It's, it's a piece in and of itself. It's, it's a kind of, of like a structural form of art. Yeah. <laughs> it's the way we kind of, we didn't even really develop this. My, my son, who you met, worked on this and worked on this. We had done a number of things similar, testing things. And he worked on this uh, to get it to get it ready to go, you know. You know what I But originally he developed it as an art piece. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what it is. What I find amazing is when it comes to the centers, for example, again, I know these, I mean, the cube is cheaper than a 24 unit system, granted, but when you open up a center like the ones they have in New York or New Jersey, let's say, you're spending like $50 an hour for something that is it would be not only an extraordinary amount of money through surgeries and everything that somebody would go through, but it doesn't do what it should do because of the, the, the conventional way of going through medical procedures. It no longer does anything because it's just physical. So when I see something like this, it's accessible. It does the job from the root. It bridges the physical world and the spirit world. And it brings all that together in that, what you call the unified field. It's it's a win-win-win for everybody. It's an energy question. spa yeah. where you can regenerate, regenerate. I want to ask you. I want to ask you a question when it comes to something we said in the beginning of this interview, which really piqued my interest when it comes to this technology, healing modality. You as an individual, your history, your work. You mentioned to me when we first started talking, and I didn't know about this before, that TLS approached you sometime around 2011. Right. Can you share a little bit more about that? I know that there's a connection between this, you, and the organization. I want to understand from your perspective, from your experience with whatever you're comfortable with sharing, what was your experience with that encounter? How long did it last? What was your reaction, response? Give us a story here. Well, it was interesting conversations initially and and basically it was about I was doing all the work um, and I said but I couldn't possibly do any more work than what I'm doing already and they said don't worry about it just know that you're part of and and when it's time you'll know more and it'll be brought forward more um, but that, that initial contact was uh, July 11th which is interesting of, of 2011 so when about I, 11 when years I, ago. When I go back to looking at the initial uh, invitation and, and, and um, being brought into that as a, and yeah. talking about transduction, tra uh, being recognized as a transducer in that system. Which is interesting because I don't know if there's a connection between that and this, but for example, in the most recent disclosure interview, Disclosure 3, there was a method that Ray actually shared called transducing. It's spelt differently. Um, it's done for certain purposes of being able to, for positive purposes, manipulate certain situations in order for them to get through certain things. Usually on the, on the dark side of the equation with the dark people that they have to neutralize in certain situations. But even when I brought that up to you and you heard that, you felt a connection between what you were called and that. and. Again, I don't know how all of this connects, yeah, but I'm and the sure. And the work we've been doing all this time. Yeah. We've, you know, we're waiting for this time, you know. So were you ever asked to be initiated into the organization? I 
don't remember if I was specifically asked to be initiated. Mm -hmm. That I don't remember. I understand that somebody by the name of uh, Humphrey Angels mm -hmm. brought TLS to your attention. Can you share a little bit more about who this man is and yeah. if we could have a better description of him? Yeah, Humphrey Angelus, Angelus is how he says it. He's originally from the Philippine, well, he's Filipino background. Um, but I met him when we were doing, um, it was, um, what is it called? Um, you know, we were given an award by the Chinese Qigong Grand Masters, um, by the International Qigong, World Qigong Conference. So I met him at a World Qigong Conference where we were given the award for producing the Qi technology because this regenerates the source Qi and the Wan Qi. And it was the first time in the history of the world that Chinese Qigong Grand Masters had given an award for a technology. I was crazy. But he was there with the Shaolin. <laughs> He's very highly trained in Shaolin techniques, etc. And very, very special, very conscious being. And we um, recognized each other and we both have been recognized as fulfillment of certain prophecies. And I had actually, years before that, had somebody sent from the Philippines to find me. And had validated, just like you checked and validated who I am. They came to and validated and then said that I was part of the release of the gold from the tunnels in the Philippines, etc. The caves. Without even knowing it. And this was, this was so many years ago. I mean, that, you know, I think that was, I mean, that was many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was before I met Humphrey, and so we had that immediate connection with, with the projects for you know, this, uh, what my guidance has called the great transference of wealth. What is Humphrey's profession, position, who, who is he exactly? What does he do in the world? Oh geez, <laughs> that's a good question. He's been off uh, doing filming and stuff, <laughs> um, um, bringing forward awareness and, but actually wanting to organize people into leadership. Okay. Yeah, and that's that was kind of his focus now is and that's part of what we'll be doing that that's what the councilship that I was invited to be part of is more of a councilship of, of and leadership of bringing people together to create the new you know it's like there's a destructuring of the old systems we've got to create the new systems you can't even begin to fix how broken the old systems have been. Mm -hmm. So we've got to create the new systems of community, of life, um, uh, in abundance. You know, we have everything to heal everything, a new heaven, a new earth through us. Let's create heaven on earth, a thousand years of peace. I mean, all, all that kind of prophecy. So that's what he's very much about. There's so much that we can go into just based on that. But I want to... So much to heal from all of that. Yeah. And yes, and, and yeah, this is the, you know, everything they talk about with the med beds we've been doing and that's part of. And, and I know we talk um, with, with Ray, you talk about the extraterrestrial and how they've taken them off planets. Well, I was asked to create the technology that was on the ships that they called the recalibration chambers. Wow. On, on the ships. That's part of, that's what this was, I'm going, you want me to, in fact, when I got told to do all this, I'm going, you got the right channel? I'm blonde here. Of course, I'm the one that does the double blonde studies. That's what everybody jokes about. <laughs> but it's like, do you have the right channel? You want me to do what? Because <laughs> it was a whole download of what was to be done. And part of it was to recreate the recalibration chambers that were on the ships. Okay. What would you do with that? <laughs> because it's for putting the DNA back when you go through hyperspace or go to different planets or di do different missions or assignments or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you put everything back in its original divine matrix, so yeah. to speak? That's what the recalibration chambers are for. Have you ever worked on that? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Big picture. There's two questions. How can I support your work 
to help further expand on it and, and reach more people? And what can all of us do together to help support this and get this out to the world? Awareness is power. Um, but the only thing beyond love is more fully shared love. That's what we're being called to do. You know, it was divide and conquer. We have to come together, unified field of consciousness. We have to be the greater community. And we have to share. Uh, not just hold information to yourself, because the more we speak truth, the more others step forward and speak truth. If people are holding back out of fear of prosecution, persecution, that creates more fear of persecution, more persecution, right? Mm -hmm. We've, just like you're doing, it's so important that you share the knowledge, share the truth, that we share, share, share with everybody with ears to hear, eyes to see. <laughs> you know, Christ said everything he did and more were to do. Let's get on with it. We have access to unlimited power, infinite intelligence, unconditional love, should we choose to accept it. And I talk about it's time to quit sit, just sitting on your access. Okay, and access that power, allow that power to rise up from within you. Spinal column is meant to be that standing column or wave or a pillar of light in the temple of God. And when we all stand together, God wins. So yeah, this needs to be out to everybody. Now that you know you have accountability, responsibility, you know, to share. Let's get it everywhere as fast as possible. The only thing I'm going to ask of everybody, and I'm going to actually look at the camera and say this, is I hope that after hearing and seeing what you saw here, with all the very interesting connections that were made, do something. If you're not going to go and open up a center, go and share this with people that have that ability, that have the resources to do that, because we're all in it together to be able to help each other and share that love, as Sandra was saying. So I encourage you all not only to share this video, but take responsibility. And I like how you broke that up, responsibility. You have the ability to respond if you choose to. And instead of asking what's going to happen next, you have the ability to create what happens next. We all do through something called free will. The purpose of this interview is to bring more awareness to light about light technology. A lot of you have been asking about medbed technology. This is very close, if not better, than what some of those psychopaths have in their power and in their hands. And thankfully, it's in the right hands with Dr. Michael. So I ask you all to do what needs to be done. Use your free will, exercise that free will, and let's get this out to the world because that's how we're going to make a change. Dr. Michaels, thank you for your time and thank you for your endless effort. Thank you for, for standing up. I know that there are risks that come with this and you do it selflessly. So thank you and I love you very much. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share with everybody and let's get her done. <laughs> We've got a whole world to heal. Thank you. Aloha.